Hey everyone, this is Derek J, and it is Thursday evening, July 24th, 2014. I just woke up from a nap after watching my friend Rich Paul taken away at a violation of probation hearing, and uh, he was put in handcuffs and sent to jail. After that, I went back home, started uploading the footage, and then took a much needed nap. Uh, just sort of sleep fell over me and when I woke up uh, I remembered that I had had a, an intense dream. I was covered in sweat all over my body and um, I remembered that I had just been dreaming that I was walking around an area of Philadelphia that I was unfamiliar with. It seemed a little bit like um, urban meets wild west saloon uh, type place. Anyway, it was outdoors and ran into one person who is sort of nebulous. It's not like I can identify him with a, like he had brown hair and normal looking face, sort of attractive. And, um, I was with, like, other people, but um, this was more or less happening to me. The other people who I was with, I think, were Jamie, who is my cousin from when I grew up. She was, like, a very close friend of mine, more like a sister than anything. She's my cousin, uh, who was my next-door neighbor for the first 11 years of my life. So, here's... Uh, and then I think the other person who was with me was Nicholas, but... Um, that seemed to change throughout the dream. Here's the important part. The crux of the plot is that I was walking around Philadelphia. I was drugged. I woke up in a basement. I began to record because I had my purse with me. This purse... This is where I ca carry all of my things like my video camera and my flashlight and I went into my purse and um, thankfully was able to record I felt my ass and I said I don't think I've been raped it doesn't feel like I've been raped um, but I am trapped in this basement and I don't know exactly how to get out it seems like there's there's no way uh, there's a way that looks like it, it's a door but I'm afraid of what's on the other side of that door. Um, I do some investigating and I find uh, there is actually a door that opens up to um, what looks like some backyard. Uh, there are trash cans out there. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can blend in, just walk away. Maybe no one will notice me. Am I on some compound? Are there other people who are gonna see me? So test the waters a bit, I step outside, there's someone coming, so I step back in um, to the basement and see these two young men, I forgot to mention, everyone's like my age and they are clearly gay, so so my captor um, was gay, I just knew that for some somehow, and then um, the other two guys are gay, and, and I know where I am. Uh, I know that I'm at the the compound or the area where Nicholas, my former lover, has been living with these um, gay men. Uh, it's a community of, of gay men who live and sleep together. And uh, some of this is true in reality, and then other parts of it exist only in the dream. So, for example, this organization, I don't know how I was able to, but pull up on my phone about, like, what is this organization that I'm, I'm at? And I saw videos of these same guys that I was seeing uh, around me, you know, outside and uh, in the backyard and uh, elsewhere. 
uh, participating in what looked like some satanic um, BDSM rituals and people tied up against the wall um, their penises exposed and um, seemingly in some kind of danger where the leaders derive some sort of sexual pleasure from torturing the victims and perhaps the victims derive some sort of sexual pleasure out of being tortured, I'm not sure. But I was very afraid and I I was somewhat intrigued. Uh, so in this split second decision I said to myself, well I have to either leave or, or stay here. It's now or never. I went back in quickly and saw um, there was a washer and dryer, you know, it was like a basement. Um, some things uh, in the way, some, some chairs, uh, just looked like a regular dirty basement that maybe a lot of people share. And I, I grabbed my purse and I just decided I'm gonna adopt this attitude that, oh, I belong here, I've been here all the time. I'm gonna, just gonna walk out the door and walk away. Well, I started to do that, and I ran into a red-headed boy in a black shirt. I forgot to mention that everyone so far has been wearing a black shirt. Um, with some kind of, you know, like, just generic tee. Uh, it's not like a uniform black shirt. It's just like, oh, this guy was wearing a um, Misfits shirt and this guy is wearing a Pink Floyd shirt or whatever, you know, like they just happen to be black t-shirts with maybe a band on them or some, some, some unidentifiable. And this, this red-headed guy walks up to me and says, uh, Hey, Derek. I've been waiting, I've been waiting or I've been wondering when I'm going to see you around here. And I was confused, wondering, have I met this guy? Looking at him. This was the person who I probably looked at f the most first. This was the first person who I could really see. He had um, clearly Irish descent, orange hair, and uh, freckles, and um, a long face, uh, skinny and lanky, um, not unattractive though, uh, definitely someone who I could see myself maybe getting with, um, but I've never been with a redhead, and he is walking towards me and it looks, um, happy, so I'm not, I'm not fearful, I just play cool and say, hi, uh, have we met, um, and thank you very much, and no, I, I'm, I forget his name. I want to say like Keith, because I know some, a red-headed Keith in my life, but I'm not sure that's what he said, actually. Connor or some other gay name. And I ask him where he's going and if he'll walk with me. For some strange reason, I, I guess I thought like, oh, instead of looking like I'm running away, like, oh, hey, join me. Walk with me. He was going somewhere else. He was going to a room that had a man with a bed on it. I remember we walked into that room, and I was like, oh, hey, I was just going to walk around a little bit. Uh, you're welcome to come with me. And he uh, looks at the guy who's on the bed. The guy on the bed is not wanting him to go. They're probably going to do it. And this guy, the red-headed guy, is like, okay. And he decides to walk around with me. Now this looks like something from my childhood, this area. We walk out of the room that is apparently some like bedroom, hole in the wall. Like a motel sort of thing. And the rooms, or the, the buildings around me sort of have this Mexican um, inspiration, some sort of Spanish look, like they... Uh, and this is what part looks like my childhood. There is this abandoned cinema plaza that has rows and rows of 
empty stores, but the fronts look like nice. Uh, even though there's nothing inside, it's completely abandoned. And it was deformed a little bit. It wasn't exactly that image from my childhood. When we walked out, I looked around like, oh, let's go this way. And this way was actually what appeared to be road going that way down, but then I noticed, oh no, that actually just snakes around. It's closed. Uh, it's closed off. There's like concrete walls uh, all the way around. And, you know, they have like decorative tops and stuff, so it looks kind of nice, but I can tell it's also abandoned and um, not a direction we can walk. So we end up going the other way and talking for a little bit, he says, um, you know, I don't know if you know that any of us are reading what you're writing. You write so passionately. I just want you to know that I read everything you write and we're out there. And I'm thinking, Oh, how nice, you know, you get platitudes. That's so kind of you to say. And yeah, yeah. And then sort of he just goes on his way and I go on mine. I end up back at this compound. Because we can't end our journey anywhere else, obviously. It would look like I'm walking away. So I introduce myself to the next person I see as if I belong there. The guy who I think is the leader, who I never really got a clear visual on, maybe because I was afraid to face him, or maybe I did get a look at him. Um, he sort of looked like of German descent, maybe. Um, thick brown hair, um, covering his head like a mop, and um, built um, with big muscle, but not a uh, big guy, sort of an average sized guy. And he was playing guitar, acoustic, as there was uh, a row of people around him, and they were sort of singing. Um, it seemed like they were at church, like learning a song. Like, oh, we're all going to sing along with this um, music. And the, the leader stopped and said, like, oh, this, this music's so hard to learn. Or someone from the audience said that some girl. This was the first time I saw girls, other than, you know, I guess I was with Jamie and I was concerned for her at the beginning, but then it was just me. It was just me versus these guys. And, uh, I look at my phone. I remember having a text message from Daria. And I also remember pizza being somehow present. Um, like maybe, yeah, there were like stacks of pizza in the basement. Anyway, I decided that room is just not the scene for me. I, I sat and, and listened, but they had stopped their music, and so it sort of seemed like an opportunity for me, instead of to sit and socialize and maybe sing with them, um, I'm going to get the hell out of there, quietly. So I pick up my um, coat. Oh, I forgot my purse. So I go back, get, grab my purse real quick. Whew, it's got my camera and it's got everything. I can't believe this. They're just going to let me walk away. They didn't rape me. They didn't hold me here captive. These people actually seem kind of nice. So as I'm walking past this next room, I notice there's more singing going on. And this singing is beautiful. It's an a cappella group. Uh, comprised of some people I know, others I don't. One, is, one of them is Austin Peterson. One of the other best singing activists is um, a man who I had on Peace News Now, uh, a man who I think is, is also gay, um, who sort of did an improv Like, la, 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 like conclusion to the, to the song, 
and it sounded really good. I was just amazed. I, I, I sat and, and listened um, to their song, which I, I can't recall for you now. It, it sort of uh, reminded me of maybe like a Christmas carol, but um, it was not a Christmas carol, and uh, it had been rewritten or something by... It, it was something that they had written and performed themselves, it seemed. So I find a seat over by a bar so, you know, you go walk in and it's sort of like a black, big room, like a theater room. And one end of it is a stage with lights lit, a, a boom stand mic, you know, where this group is performing. There are probably about 20 or so performers and then one front row of like five people who are real close to the mic. You could tell they were the leads. To my left was a couple... I didn't even look at the man. The woman had blonde hair and was flirting with the, the guy she was with. Uh, they were both having a drink. She was having a pink drink that was very small, like a tiny, it was like a raised shot glass, except the glass was one I had never seen before. It was like this shape, so I guess like, like a dildo or something, I don't know. Um, it was like a solid glass all the way up until the top. So maybe like what a candlestick might look like or something. So it's like a crystal bottom, totally clear and see-through. And then the top had a pink, pink, pink drink. Not something that looked like a um, clear liquid, like an apple teeny, but a um, Pepto-Bismol pink. The liquid inside didn't have the consistency or the viscosity of Pepto-Bismol. It was much more fluid, but uh, I could tell it was some sort of alcoholic drink. I asked her, what is it? And she said, it's a gimlet. You haven't seen a gimlet before? I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I have. This is not a gimlet, but okay, I'll just go with it. And, um, decide uh, just to, to move her glass over a little bit so I can squeeze in and, and watch this performance. And as I'm watching the performance, oh, it's just wrapping up, it's just concluding it. I guess I sort of missed it. But I, I now, with, with the silence of the performers, notice that there are a group of mostly old men <laughs> in the audience uh, in the chairs to my right. Um, 30 or so audience members, almost proportional to how many performers there are. And I decide, okay, I've really got to leave this compound thing. I walk out from one of the back screen doors, and I'm back in that urban environment, like, um, you know, I walk out one backyard, and it's sort of gated, fenced in. Across the street is like a gas station convenience store sort of thing. Doesn't look like there are many people around. Um, Low-income housing area. And uh, there might be some other people around, but it's pretty ghetto. So I'm thinking, I'm not thinking this out loud, but I'm probably in West Philly. Um, leaving this mansion of gays, and I'm thinking, what, you know, like, what am I leaving behind? Are these gay guys going to have some kinky sex? Like, maybe I should stay, maybe I should be a part of them and, and join their group. They seem like, like me, you know, like, uh, like I would fit in here, and I can, I get them. Like, they, they were... I don't know why I knew this, but they were having some sort of legal troubles or legal representation. For some reason, their their group was under fire, and I wanted to communicate this to them. Like, I get that. I get what you guys are going through as a community. I get that you just want to be together, doing your thing, being yourselves. I want to help you, although I don't want to be a part of you. And, not, at least not yet, as I'm walking away, 
there are some black guys standing by a car who shout something out at me and then I I walk past so I've got my little my purse I'm walking past like a little gay boy leaving a club and I don't know how I'm dressed although I'm probably dressed pretty gay like you know whatever I normally wear and I'm hit, hit slugged off oh, god right in the back of my head sucker punched this could have something to do with the fact that uh, I just witnessed a trial earlier this morning where one of the victims in the video evidence had been sucker punched uh, from behind but anyway that's what happened to me and I'm oh god that hurts but I have to keep walking or I'll show weakness uh, let's walk it off. Oh God, walk it off. Okay, and I just keep walking, and I sort of congratulate myself, like myself, like you're you're pretty tough. You can take a punch. Like, you know, people think you're not tough. You're willing to go all the way. You're willing to take a punch and, and not react, not turn violent. Good for you. The next group of people I come behind, come behind, come beyond, come upon. As I'm walking a couple of streets down, still in like what looks like a West Philly sort of dark neighborhood. Not the people, but it's dark out at this time. It, it was daytime when it started, but now it's nighttime. Clearly the street lights are on. Outside there's a, you know, closed down stores. And there's a tall fat man, a shorter fat man and some tall lanky kid standing by a pickup truck uh, out on the side of the road. There aren't any cars around it. This is an odd sight in Philadelphia. You don't see a pickup truck often um, because they're horrible to park, but it is conceivable that in a place like West Philly, maybe there's some parking, there's no one around who has a car, I don't know. But this guy comes up to me this fat guy and I recognize that he is a threat somehow I don't know exactly why because but I just don't want this stranger coming up and, and talking to me I don't know what he does um, but he is one of the the people I remember from this dream who frightened me I didn't get a visual on him. He was wearing a backwards hat. Um, he looked sort of like a, a person I remembered from high school who was on the ac academic challenge team. He was nowhere near a, a threat or a bully of any kind, but this person was. And I want to say that's it. That's where I woke up and, and said, uh, oh, this was just a dream. I really thought this had been happening to me, that I had been drugged, raped, bought, brought to a compound of, of gays, and um, escaped. But as I escaped, I realized that they weren't holding me hostage. One interesting thing, my purse, when I went back to retrieve it, things had fallen out of it. It was knocked over or something and I was shoveling everything back in and one of the things that had, was in it were white Tic Tacs or maybe they were orange, I think they were white though and I was thinking to myself, I don't, I'm, I mean I haven't bought Tic Tacs in years, not since I was a kid and I, don't, I ate the orange ones because they were like candy. The Tic Tacs I was suspicious were how I was drugged, how I was like maybe offered Tic Tacs, and then I took some, and then boom, I'm out. Because I definitely woke up in the basement of this compound with no real way to go, having to figure out with my other partners how to how to get out. And then the the other partners sort of diminished. It was Jamie at the at first, and then the, 
maybe Nick a second, but I guess as I realized where I am, the dream sort of morphed and became more about me being captured by this group of BDSM gays who were under fire by the government for associating or whatever they do. So I guess this dream, um, I don't dream often, or more accurately, I suppose I should say, I don't remember my dreams often. And so I think it's important when I do remember them to recall as much detail as possible. And that's what I've done here. And this is sort of a video dream journal. What do you think it means?